Hi, I would like to present uh, a statistical approach on downscaling statistical information. Uh, before I um, do that, I will say something about why. So we know that global climate models, which are the main uh, tool for uh, say, seeing or uh, protecting what is happening in the future, have, are designed to uh, reproduce large scale features in the climate system. Uh, so they are representative of the, of the large scale, but they're not able to provide details needed for the local times, uh, local scales, local climates. So uh, because of the limitations of the global climate models, um, and they have a minimum scope of scale, we want to uh, grab this salient information and make use of that, we call that distillation. We also know that the local uh, climate is also depending on the large scale uh, conditions. So there's a scale dependency that we want to make use of and add that information about the scale dependency to the global climate model results in order to estimate what is happening locally. And here we focus on the statistics of 24 hour precipitation locally, for instance, heavy events. Um, we want to go um, to derive robust results. And uh, for, for instance, uh, we, uh, when we use general extreme value theory, uh, we often have three parameters, scale, shape, and location, which are fitted on the tail of its distribution or a small subset. And then their estimates can vary quite significantly depending on how it's, uh, the, the, uh, the data is being sampled, because there's a, there's a small number of, of, of data points. But we focus on the wet day mean precipitation and the wet day frequency, which are estimated from a bulk of a data set, so they are much more robust estimates. Uh, this approach has been influenced by statisticians. Um, and the uh, discussions with statisticians, but since I'm a physic physicist, it also leans on physics as well. Um, and also the approach, uh, we want it to be as simple as possible. So it's uh, quick to implement, easy to implement, but also to provide robust results. And the traditional way of downscaling it has been uh, focused on um, individual data points, uh, which when you combine them in, after, in, in time, you get a time series. And here's one example here. With uh, data temperatures in Oslo and uh, Vardø in Norway, and we can see that they have different climates here. And in climate change um, work, we are interested in the climate rather than uh, the weather. So we want to, uh, to, to estimate the statistical properties of the temperature here or rainfall. Um, and in this case, uh, the uh, temperatures can be uh, uh, viewed as histograms, which then uh, in provide information about, say, probabilities and, uh, or the frequencies of, of how often uh, they uh, appear. So the goal here is to actually um, find parameters which can describe the shape of these curves uh, and estimate them directly rather than estimating them through uh, um, these, these uh, data points here. So we want to downscale these directly rather than um, uh, through uh, the traditional way. Uh, we focus on uh, precipitation and then we have wet and dry days and we know that different physical conditions are present at different uh, uh, like uh, wet and dry days. Uh, and we, um, we also know that when it's dry, there's no rainfall, so that's easy. So we want to focus on the uh, uh, wet days. But that, gives, that leaves us with two key parameters. So what is the wet day frequency, which tells us how often does it rain? Uh, zero, it never rains. One, it rains all the time. And then we see that for the wet days, that the, the, the distribution is approximately exponential. And that, uh, and the, uh, Exponential distribution has one parameter mu, and that's the same as uh, with, uh, the, the mean of the uh, of the, uh, the uh, wet day uh, amounts. And in this case, you can see how the shape is affected by different values of wet day mean precipitation. So then we want to downscale these two parameters on, on a local scale, and we can do that using um, error five reanalysis on a large scale. On a large region, uh, we have daily rainfall and we can estimate the wet frequency in the large uh, region. 
and see how that can be related to the wet day mean uh, wet day frequency on a small on a on a local um, ring gauge uh, uh, data points. And we see that uh, the cross validation correlation is 0.72, so it actually there's a fairly good uh, skill in this uh, downscaling model. Same thing also for the wet day mean precipitation here as well. So we can calibrate the models uh, or like a downscale model for these two parameters. And then we want to apply this to global mean, uh, global uh, climate models uh, to make projections for the future. And here's one example for Oslo Greenland. The black uh, points there are annual uh, wet day frequency observed uh, from observations. And the green um, uh, curves here are um, uh, an, an ensemble of 30 CMIP6 um, SSP370 uh, runs. And, and there's not hardly any trend in the, in the past and not, neither in the future. So these results are fairly realistic and the models actually do fairly well. A similar analysis for uh, the, the wet day mean precipitation indicates that there has been a, a slight trend in the past, uh, but also like the models indicate like a slight trend in the future. But we see also that there are some, some strange features here at the bottom here. So some of the models may not do, do reproduce the wet day mean precip precipitation as well as uh, others. Um, we can use these two uh, parameters to estimate the shape of the curves as well. And one example here is the intensity duration frequency curves. The, the, uh, the blue ones uh, sh uh, show the present and the red one, the future uh, IDF curves here. Here's the duration of rainfall, and here's the amount of rainfall. Uh, these, uh, these curves are based on this equation here. So this is parameterized um, curves. Uh, only approximate, of course, and the wet day mean precipitation is, is, is one parameter, the wet day frequency is another, and then the L is the duration of rainfall in, in terms of hours, and the tau here is the, uh, the, the uh, return interval, uh, as we see in the different uh, panels here. Uh, in this, and now an alpha is a, is a calibration uh, coefficient. And in this case, we used uh, wet and mean precipitation and frequency from um, uh, the Eurocodex ensemble. And you can see here uh, the, uh, the, the ensemble and the spreads here as well. And another way of um, predicting the shape of the IDF curves is through principal component analysis, PCA. This is a non-parameterized way. It's more like machine learning. And we use regression to, and we found a, a, that these, the shape of the leading PCA principal component is a function of uh, what they mean precip precipitation and a distance to the coast. And you can see that the, the, we have curves for various parts of the, of the country here. So, and the, and the colors of the curves match the colors in the map here as well. We can also uh, grid the, uh, these parameters. And here in this example, we have graded the, the tre estimated trend for the future in the wet day frequency in terms of percentage uh, uh, with res respect to the mean, the mean uh, frequency. And we can see that as in some regions, there's uh, decreasing uh, frequencies and some increasing uh, that have been projected for the future. And a similar um, results for the wet the mean precipitation suggests that there's an increase, uh, a more general increase, but there are some exceptions here as well. In order to evaluate uh, these results, we also need to check whether the global climate models actually do a good job in reproducing the, um, the predictors that we use uh, in these models. And for this, we use common EOFs to see if the, uh, the global climate models capture the covariance structure found in the, the reanalysis. And this example shows the spatial pattern of the covariance matrix uh, uh, structure. And um, based on a joint data set of uh, the mean annual cycle of all the CMIP6 models and also ERA5 as well. And, uh, and the, the leading uh, components uh, explain 68%. So, so there's, a, there's a, a fairly close similarity. So the models do match ERA5. Quite fairly well, and you can see here is the the uh, the time index of the the leading mode, and the, the black curve is era five, and the green ones are the CMIP six, and one outlier has a different color here as well. So it is a fairly good job. 
in addition to cross-validation of downscale results. And we also check whether the observations are consistent with the statistical population of the downscale ensemble, uh, looking at spread and, and trends as well. So towards the end, I want, we also want to emphasize that we need to combine uh, statistical downscaling and dynamical downscaling because they uh, make completely different assumptions but should give the same results. So to go, uh, here we have combined uh, Eurocodex results uh, with um, empirical statistic, statistical downscale results um, uh, in red, uh, the, exactly the same models, and we see that they actually correspond fairly well. So the downscaling works, but we also see that the uh, the um, the four GCMs that were used in the Eurocodex is a very small subset and do not capture the full range of the entire multimodal ensemble. So we need many climate model simulations in order to get a, a, a realistic or a good uh, representation of what the future outlook might, may look like. So uh, by that, I want to thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions or anything, uh, please don't hesitate contacting me. Thank you very much.